Hey everyone, this is Sora Studios today, and I have something really exciting to show you. Uh, one of my friends, Tabitha, from church, she, huge Star Wars Lego fan, and has been for a very long time, but she's finally getting rid of her collection, so there's a couple sets that she has, and I was like, oh, I think I might want these, um, and so she was like, yeah, I'll let you pick one, and we'll figure out a pretty reasonable price from there since we're friends and so she had the 2007 mtt trade federation and if you if you know where this is going there we are i am now the proud owner of the mtt the best mtt ever made screw the newer one screw the older one this is it this is the boy you want so i have that um she already like cleaned all these pieces and inventoried all of them like very thorough very well done so i think i think i can get right to building yeah so let's hop in to the time lapse And we have finished. Look at this. This is honestly better than I could have ever imagined. I've always seen this set in pictures, but like, to actually be able to physically hold this, like, this is something else. This is a good set. Now, <laughs> I guess just mar to marvel at just the size of this, I. Oh. <sighs> All right, yeah, so instruction manual, uh, very nice. You could definitely tell this set was made in the 2007s or, you know, the earlier years of LEGO because a lot of the steps are not as straightforward as some of the more modern day LEGO instruction booklets. It was way easier to miss pieces here than it is a uh, set you get in stores right now. Now, however, I kind of like that. I kind of like how it didn't just give you everything in the sets you kind of had to search and look for it a little bit and I think there's um I think there's some merit to that I think that sometimes we make things too easy you know sometimes it's okay to struggle it's okay to think things through I'm not gonna get into a long philosophical rant right now but instruction booklets pretty cool but for now let's go over this guy so our first minifigure we're going to review is a buildable minifigure which is this droid echo which is honestly when i looked at the pictures of this set i thought this droid echo is super big like this is way too oversized but honestly i like how beefy it is and i like how accurate it looks uh, i don't know if you could tell during the time lapse but i was watching episode one and two of star wars during it and so i was looking at these two vehicles and the and the droid echoes in it for a while and i was like huh this actually is very accurate this is a pretty darn good droid echo like i like it and i especially like the brass shiny pieces that it comes with especially i haven't seen this brass coating on pieces like this right here like the arms so this is a really cool this is a really uh cool thing that they added in it doesn't really roll up uh but nonetheless it's a very cool droid echo and it's the only this is the only time we get this particular design of droid echo in any set so yeah this might have to take my new favorite for droid echoes that lego has made now the set itself comes with a lot of droids and let me just go through how many droids first of all 
Uh, it comes with two. Oh, no. I guess this is going to do that. There we are. It comes with two pilot droids. One is in there. Another one is in the back. And it also comes with two security droids with the red bodies right here. The security droids and the pilot droids do not come with guns. Uh, I wouldn't expect the pilot droids to come with guns, but I kind of expected the security droids, honestly, to come with guns, but that's whatever. And then the rest of the, the rest of the droid minifigures amount to 16, I believe. And allow me to just show you, I guess, this feature to show you the rest of the standard B1 battle droids. First of all, there's nothing really different about these B1 battle droids, except for the fact that they have two different types of arms. They're not that old, so even the security droids and the pilot droids have the two different types of arms. The curved one, and then the one that can hold a gun and shoot. Up here up front, we have these two bubble turrets that have these dual guns on the front that can move fairly uh, well and are very versatile. Now this is the main feature of the set, this is why everyone gets the set. You have this small little gear piece right here and if you turn it, yeah, that's right, out comes all 16 B1 battle droids. And what's great about this is that you can take one of these panels off, or you can take both of them off, but if you want to, you can take them off like this and then set them down and deploy them. As you can see, regular B1 battle droids. I'm going to keep this out just because of a later feature. But yeah, this is the uh, this is the rack that they come in. I think that a UCS version of this would be cool. It's never going to happen, but it would be really cool to see them like load down like they actually do in the movie. I like this uh, slanted design they got going on with these bubble tears. Make them, it makes them look way more beefy in this black uh, gear design on the bottom. If you come up, you have these panels on either side of the MTT. And inside, it's super dark. Let me see if I can get some more light in there. But you can open it up and you'd be able to see the droids uh, when they were in there so allow me to just quickly roll this rack back in and there you can see the top of the rack come there inside here we have stored the gun rack for the b1 battle droids yep there are 16 guns right there so this is a very nice rack um, to have for all of your battle droids in there. The other side does come open just the same. And so you can see through the other side some orange uh, slanted pieces right there, translucent. So some nice design there. Really not much to it. If we head up, as you saw on the other side, this opened up. And the same on this side. This side also opens up just as well. And you can sort of see. Uh, droid pilot in there, but a way easier way to access him is to take this top off like so. And there he is with his control panels. Just going to take this little piece out like such, so we can get a better view. And there are his controls sort of antenna pieces with this red base, which I really like. His seat right here, which is a one-piece seat. And his two control panels for him to uh, for him to control the MDT. It's a pretty nice stand as well. And in order to close the front of it, you just lift that up and Pull that down or push it down. There's the front of the MTT. Moving on closer to the back of it, we have a lot more, uh, sort of like a very beefy area. If you go on a bird's eye view, back is a little bit meatier than the front. As the front, you have these panels that can pull down. You saw the security droids on the other side, 
and I'm going to pull the other side down so you can see better inside. But there is uh, another control panel for the security droids to man back there. Um, and the reason why is so that they can deploy the cart that this MTT carries. Here's more of the back. Some greebling right there. A uh, very nice design for this door. But this door can open like such. And out comes this little cart. It's a very nice cart. It has this is where the other droid pilot is, and this is where he just stands and controls it. He can carry around sort of like this communications array. I think it's meant to really be the communications array for the battle droids because in the episode one, Phantom Menace. The droids were all controlled by one command station, even though it was up in the Trade Federation battleship. I think this is what this is designed to be. And then in the Clone Wars, they became more sentient and more um, personal and less controlled by one thing versus uh, uh, being able to make their own decisions. It also comes with two DC rifles, which I guess could go to the security droids, which I do appreciate that they added this in. This is a very simplified cart. It just rides on these. And yeah, this also comes off. Now, this is the extra feature that I think is really cool. This car, this, wow, <laughs> this cart is very multi purpose. This cart can carry uh, what I just showed you. It can carry a ton of droids. I think it's really supposed to be. Uh, based off of the joy transport carrier that we saw in the movie it can carry a rack of droids it can also carry the gun rack the gun rack can be moved around by this guy and finally not quite sure why you do this but you could technically carry the droid pilot you have sort of like this makeshift command station which i think honestly is kind of cool so a very nice extra feature by Lego. There's the cart without anything on it. And it can just be stored back inside the back hanger of the MTT. It just slides right in and then the door closes. And so that is the Trade Federation MTT. Oh, overall thoughts, definitely get this set. Like, I, <laughs> I, I've i come to realize that whenever LEGO makes separatist sets, it, they don't really sell well. Because, I mean, we're going to collect clones. You know, when was the last time you saw someone like, oh, here's my droid army? You know, it's not as common as someone who is talking about their clone army. So, I'm, obviously, the Clone Wars sets are going to be more gravitated towards. And... Every single army builder I know can only really build one army. Like, you don't really see a lot of people who build two armies, like Imperial and Clone uh, Republic, um, or Separatist and Rebellion or whatever, or, or First Order. It's just really hard to do, and it's very time-consuming, and it, it's very financially consuming. So, this set is not something that, you know, I would have instantly thought of, oh, I should get this, but... Let me tell you, out of all of the Separatist sets that they've ever made, this one is definitely up there in the top three, if not the first slot of the best Separatist sets out there. This is a, this is just a huge MTT. Like this is just a, an enormous. This is just an enormous build. It is absolutely beautiful, and I. <laughs> Yeah, I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, I'm very happy that I'm very happy that uh, my friend was able to sell it to me for a very reasonable price, and it's yeah. Other than that, it's just been it's it's a great set. It was a great build. I enjoyed, yeah, I really enjoyed building this. I love how it looks. I love the features. Next time I have a battle with my friends, I'm definitely bringing this there. Uh, if I'm on the Separatists, even if I'm not on the Separatists, I'm gonna print it here so that they can um, sort of experience 
um, just pushing this out onto the battlefield and deploying 16 battle droids that's amazing so if you really wanted to army build your separatist army this would definitely be a set to get uh, in comparison to the newer MTT I just think it was an insult almost to what this MTT is um, I don't have it or else I would have done a comparison I don't have the first one either or else I would do a comparison on that as well but maybe I will and maybe a comparison will come out in the future and I really hope that LEGO decides to make a blue version of this in the future because then I definitely get that and then we'd have a very nice comparison to do all right everyone thank you for watching please like comment subscribe down below click that bell icon so you know when I'm posting new content give this video a like if you think this is the best separatist set that LEGO has ever made because I definitely think it is 100% the best all right everyone this is Sawyer Studios, and I'll see you all in the next video.